For more stock news updates, remember to press the like button and subscribe. With that being said, let's get straight into the video. The September effect is a well-known phenomenon in the stock market, referring to the month's historical tendency to perform poorly compared to other months. Ryan Dietrich, who serves as the chief market strategist at the advisory firm Carson Group, has pointed out that September has consistently been the worst performing month for the market over several time periods, including the last 10 years, the last 20 years, and even stretching back to 1950. Supporting this view, Fisher Investments has noted that September is the only month since 1925 to average a negative return. As September begins, stocks are already showing signs of weakness, adding to the sense of unease as Wall Street enters what is traditionally considered its most challenging month. There are numerous theories that attempt to explain why September tends to be a tough month for stocks. One popular explanation is that traders, after returning from their summer vacations, often choose September as the time to rebalance their portfolios. This rebalancing involves selling off stocks, which increases the volume of selling activity and exerts downward pressure on stock prices. Another theory suggests that bond offerings, which typically increase in September as the summer vacation season ends, may divert funds away from stocks. This shift in capital flow from equities to bonds could contribute to the decline in stock prices. Yet another explanation involves mutual funds, many of which conclude their fiscal years on October 31st. According to this theory, mutual funds may close out losing positions in the final months of their fiscal year to take advantage of tax benefits, thereby contributing to selling pressure in September. However, none of these explanations provide a definitive reason for the September effect. While it is true that trading activity tends to decrease during the peak vacation months, the advent of algorithmic trading and the increasing ability for people to work remotely using smartphones have diminished the impact that summer vacations once had on stock prices. Additionally, research has shown that mutual funds often anticipate the seasonal selling pressures that occur during the latter part of the year and adjust their strategies accordingly. This means that while these factors may play a role, they do not fully explain why September has such a poor track record. In reality, the September effect may be more closely related to a few particularly bad Septembers than to any consistent underlying cause. For example, in September 1931, during the depths of the Great Depression, the S&P 500 experienced its worst monthly performance ever, losing 29.6% of its value. This disastrous month contributed significantly to September's poor reputation. Another difficult September occurred in 2008, when the S&P 500 fell by nearly 9% following the collapse of Lehman Brothers, a major financial institution. These catastrophic events have left a lasting mark on the perception of September as a dangerous month for investors. Despite September's reputation, there are several reasons why investors should not be overly concerned about staying in the market during this month. Over the past 100 years, stocks have actually risen in September slightly more often than they have fallen. Specifically, stocks have increased 51% of the time during September compared to falling 49% of the time. This slight edge suggests that sitting out the market in September is far from a guaranteed path to success. In fact, by avoiding the market in September, investors could miss out on potential gains. Furthermore, Fisher Investments has calculated that the median return for September, which is a measure that neutralizes extreme positive and negative outcomes, is 0% over the last 98 years. This means that while there have been some extreme cases of market downturns in September, the typical result is neither a significant gain nor a significant loss. This neutral performance further supports the idea that September is not inherently more dangerous than other months. This year, however, there are additional factors that may heighten investor anxiety about the month of September. One of the most significant is the upcoming presidential election. The uncertainty surrounding the outcome of the election could create additional volatility in the stock market over the next two months. Investors may be concerned about how the policies of the different candidates will affect the economy and, by extension, the stock market. Historically, however, presidential elections have not made September a worse month for stocks. In fact, the data shows that stocks have advanced in nearly two-thirds of the Septembers leading up to a presidential election, specifically in 62.5% of such Septembers. This statistic represents 15 out of the 24 election cycles since 1925. Notably, this performance is better than the overall average for all months, and only one percentage point lower than the average performance for the stock market across all months. Additionally, during presidential elections, years, the median return for September has been 0.3%, which while modest is still positive. That being said, it is important to recognize that stock market performance is driven more by the present day evaluations of economic conditions and investor expectations than by historical patterns. 
In the case of this particular election cycle, the way investors perceive the candidates' economic proposals and their potential impact on the economy could have a significant influence on stock performance in the coming weeks. Therefore, while historical data provides some reassurance, investors should also consider the unique dynamics of this election when making decisions. In addition to the election, there are several other uncertainties that could influence the market in September. One key factor is the health of the labor market. A strong or weak jobs report could significantly sway investor sentiment. Another important consideration is inflation. If inflation continues to rise, it could prompt the Federal Reserve to take further action, such as raising interest rates. The Federal Reserve's decisions and statements about future policy will also be closely watched by investors, as these factors are likely to play a major role in determining the direction of the market in the near term. Ultimately, while the September effect is a well-known phenomenon, it is not necessarily a reason to panic or to exit the market. In the end, the September effect refers to the historical trend of stock market underperformance during September. Several theories suggest that factors such as portfolio rebalancing, increased bond offerings, and mutual fund tax strategies contribute to this pattern. However, none of these explanations fully account for September's poor reputation, which is likely influenced by a few particularly bad Septembers, such as those in 1931 and 2008. Despite its reputation, historical data shows that stocks have risen slightly more often than they have fallen in September. This year, additional uncertainties such as the upcoming presidential election, labor market health, inflation, and Federal Reserve policies may influence market performance more than the so-called September effect. For more stock news updates, remember to press the like button and subscribe. With that being said, I will see you in the next video.